In the previous lecture, we introduced the idea of the cost function, which quantifies the difference between our model's current outputs compared with the actual outputs we want our model to be producing in response to our data. We said that learning was changing our parameter values to minimize this cost function. We also covered gradient descent and talked about how the gradient tells us how much we should change each of our parameter values in order to take steps toward decreasing our cost function. We're going to go through how we can use this gradient to update the neural network as it learns. But before showing how neural networks update their parameters, I want to first look at how all the parameters in a multi-layer neural network affect the output of the neural network by stepping through the computations of a multi-layer network. Let's look at this example of a fully connected feed-forward neural network. Just as a reminder, not all neural networks are fully connected. So this means that for many neural networks, neurons are connected only to some of the neurons in the subsequent layer. However, for this example, let's consider a fully connected neural network and step through the computations of each of the neurons in this network to see how the neurons work together in order to produce an output, and also count through all the parameters that we need to have to learn in each layer. Let's say we have two-dimensional inputs, x1 and x2. For this network shown, our first hidden layer has six neurons. All the neurons in the first hidden layer will receive the two-dimensional input. Each of these six neurons needs to find their own unique weights, which is two weights because we have two-dimensional inputs, and a single bias. So for the neurons in this first hidden layer of this network shown, neuron 1 needs to find two weights and one bias, neuron 2 needs to find two weights and one bias, etc. for all six neurons. Let's count how many parameters this network has in this first hidden layer where there are six neurons that take two-dimensional inputs. This means each of the six neurons have two unique weights and one bias, giving us a total of 12 weights and six biases to learn in this layer. Now let's look at the calculation that each neuron does. It takes the weighted sum of its inputs, adds the bias, and passes it through an activation function to produce an output. In our fully connected neural network, the output of all the neurons in the first hidden layer get sent to every neuron in the second hidden layer. Our second hidden layer has eight neurons. Each of these eight neurons receives six inputs, which are the outputs of each of the six neurons in the first layer. So the inputs to the neurons in the second layer is six dimensional, one dimension, for each of the six neurons feeding in from the first layer. Because the neurons in the second layer are receiving six-dimensional inputs, they need to each find six unique weight values for each of these inputs, plus one bias for each neuron. Which means in total, this layer has 48 unique weight values and eight unique bias values. Now again, each neuron needs to perform its computation, which is to take the weighted sum of its inputs, add the bias, and pass this through an activation function to produce an output. The output of the neurons from the second layer become the inputs to the neurons in the third layer. Our third layer shown has four neurons. Each third layer neuron has eight dimensional input, one dimension for each neuron in the second layer that's feeding in. So every neuron in the third layer needs to find eight unique weights for each dimension of its inputs and one bias term. This results in eight weights for four neurons, which is 32 unique weights and four unique biases. This third layer is the output layer of our example network. So the output of the third layer will be the output of our model. Summing together all the parameters for all three layers of our neural network, we have a total of 110 parameters. Our example here is a relatively small neural network, and modern deep learning neural networks can have millions or even billions of parameters. 
Here I want to take a short interlude to talk about linear algebra and discuss notation. Because we're taking so many weighted sums, the computation of neural networks is typically written using linear algebra notation, which is matrices and vectors. Matrix notation is a way of succinctly representing many multiplication and addition operations. A matrix is a matrix of numbers, as shown here. Vectors are another name for matrices where there is only a single column or a single row of numbers. I want to show how we can represent the computations of a neural network with matrix multiplication. What matrix multiplication means is that all the rows of the matrix on the left are going to be combined as weighted sums with all the values of the columns of the matrix on the right. Here, the matrix on the right is only a single column and it's also known as a vector. Taking this weighted sum between rows and columns is also known as the dot product. If we have a plus sign between two matrices of the same size, here it's two vectors that are columns of the same size, what we do is just do element by element addition. So there's no crossing of rows and columns for addition and subtraction. We only cross rows and columns for multiplication. And this is what this matrix representation is telling us, that we should compute our weighted sum plus bias like this.